welcome, welcome, welcome to Bible study tonight. Good evening. It's going down in a major way. We are in the house. We're in the building. Hallelujah. By the word prophetic ministries, we are here. Pastor Marcus, Prophetess Mickey is here. Hallelujah. We welcome you. We greet you tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take a moment, invite a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend, get your Bible, get your notebook, get your prayers on, hallelujah, get your breakthrough, get your deliverance, hallelujah. We welcome you. We're taking a few moments to praise and worship. We're going to get into tonight's teaching, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Good evening, Daddy Victor. Amen. God bless you, sir. Standing at attention and ready. God bless you. Amen. Love you, sir. Thank you. I see, we got some people on. Woman of God. Good evening, Misha, honey. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Good evening. Always a blessing to have you. See the food, the fellowship, and with you. I'm looking forward to get you right Put your praise on. And everyone else who's on your screen. Here, honey. Woman of God, who's thinking about you? It's so good to see you. Hallelujah. Hearts, hearts, hearts back as well. Hallelujah. Any hope? Any faithful? Any righteous? Hallelujah. Just take a minute if you haven't already. Just hit that share button. Share the service. Hallelujah. Share it to your timeline. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody give it praise tonight. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And this is how we used to pray from the church of God. Somebody bless him tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. 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 We welcome you tonight. We're keeping it going. We're keeping it going. We're keeping it going. Great and mighty God is our God. Hallelujah. If you're on here tonight, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us tonight. Again, if you haven't already, take a moment to invite somebody to church. Invite somebody to service tonight. Bible study is on. It's on. It's on. Hallelujah. Amen. And praise him while you Hallelujah. Somebody, one more song, one more song. Somebody lift him up tonight. This is how we seek the Lord as well. We seek him in worship. We seek him in praise. We let him know, Lord, I love you and I need you and I desire you. Hallelujah. Somebody love on him tonight. Love on him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, the Lord, have a mighty name. Oh, glory 
Jesus. We love you tonight. Yes. Praise God. We welcome you tonight. It's a Biden word in the house. Bible study is on tonight. Pastor Marcus, Prophetess Mickey, and all of our brothers and sisters, hallelujah, who are joining us live online. We welcome you tonight. God bless you. God bless you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Just a couple of quick announcements, and we are going to get into tonight's teaching. Hallelujah. We want you to get your Bible we want you to get your notebook. Hallelujah. The Lord has given us an invitation. The message and the series that we're on is an open invitation. Hallelujah. And anytime, see, I'm about to start preaching. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm excited. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Father. That word that's about to come forth tonight. Glory to God. And we just want to say, Makisha, honey, you are doing the work. This is what we're talking about. Get them people in here. Invite them in to sit at the king's table. We always say it's love when you invite others to come and to sit at the king's table and to eat of the king's delicacies Amen. with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. This is love. Vanessa, honey, Ooh, wow. love you, sweetheart. Love, love you. you. Good evening. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Come on, Makisha. Keep inviting them in. You get them in here too, Vanessa. You know how y'all do. Hallelujah. Amen. But yes, we have just a couple of announcements. As we already know, amen, amen. You already know who we are. We are your pastor and your prophetess, amen. And now moving on. Yes, yes, yes. Our website, amen. If you want to get to know more about us, you already know what to do. Come on through www.awpm.org. Come through, get to see about the different departments that are within this ministry that are about to flourish and thrive and just go to a whole nother level, amen, as we begin to swell in the ministry, as the souls begin to come in more and Hallelujah. more. Miss Makisha, she just joined the ministry on Sunday. Everybody give her some love, amen. She just joined the AWPM family. Love's love. So we are excited about her, amen. She is the praise dancer. Amen. Oh, just wait till that begins to hit the people. It is. Begins to hit the people. Amen. Yes, that I level am. of worship. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. The yes, come by and see us there. But also our ministry email. Look, if you have prayer requests, counseling requests, these kinds of things, if you want to let us know that you gave your life to Christ as a result of the ministry coming forth, please let us know if you are rededicating your life to Christ. <laughs> Let us know. Send us a line there. If you want to say hello to us, if you just want to say, hey, I love y'all, anything, be of encouragement to us. Those are the things that encourage us. Amen. Amen. Because we're doing this for the Lord. Amen. So send it here at awpmin21 at gmail.com. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, our ministry YouTube channel. Let me tell you, let me tell you. You ain't missing a thing. Look, if you're sick, you're not feeling too good. You may have slept through for whatever reason. Look. You can go right here at Abiding Word Prophetic Ministries on YouTube. Here we have archived every service. Amen. 
just for your convenience. Why? Because the word, it needs to be heard more than one time anyway, so that you get it in your system. Repetition, let me tell you, yes. meditation. Hallelujah. So even when you go to sleep, you can play the message back and you can listen to the word. Oh, go there. Be enriched in your spirit, man. Swell up. Become that strong, big edifice in the realm of the spirit. Amen. That the enemy know he can't stand against. Hallelujah. So you go right there to our ministry YouTube channel. And also for the givers, Ooh. we give God praise Ooh. for Ooh. the givers. Ooh. Amen. Ooh. Hallelujah. We are givers. Hallelujah. First and foremost, we can't ask nobody to do anything or tell anybody to do anything by way of the scriptures if we're not doing it ourselves. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. We are tithing offering givers. And let me tell you, we are benefiting from that which we have done in obedience to God. And how? Yeah. Come Ooh. on here. Come on. So we're trying to tell you, amen. Get in on the kingdom economy, let me tell you, because the kingdom economy will never fail you. Even when the system out here falls, that plunges, the government want to shut down, the kingdom never shuts down. That's right. Amen. That's right. Even in a famine, ah, we can reap thousand fold. Amen. That's right. That's right. God is so good. Hallelujah. So let me tell you, tithe and offering, if you are a member of the ministry, tithe and offering, you already know tithe is 10%. You can give that. Amen. That is what God requires and desires of us as his children. Hallelujah. But if you are but a partner, if you are just a friend and associate of the ministry and you want to be a blessing, an offering is all you have to give. And that is more than welcome. And we appreciate all that you do in agreement with what God is doing for this ministry. That's Hallelujah. Right. Amen. And you can give it at our ministry cash app at dollar sign A W. P.M. Hallelujah. And remember, you don't have to wait to the end of the service to give it. Hey, you could give it at the beginning of service. You can give it in the middle of service and you can give it at the end of service. Whenever that word is pricking that heart, you feel the desire, you hit that joy. Just who I just want to give. Look, it ain't even got to be a service day. You just feel the joy hit you. We've done it. Amen. All you got to do is do, 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 do. send it right on in. Amen. Because we get the work of God done in this church. Hallelujah. So there you go. You already know where to give it. Amen. You know where the blessings flow. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Also, for those you already know, membership. Boom, boom, boom. Get in this house. Amen. Look. Give some of this eye contact right now. Come on. Give it to them, Pastor. Give some of this eye contact. And get in this house. Look, I put on some lashes for y'all tonight. Feel it. Feel it. They're flapping. They're flapping for you. Amen. Come on here. I felt like being just a little cute. Amen. Amen. Every woman desires to All sometimes. Time. Amen. So I look. Stay focused. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Everybody, look. If you need a spiritual family, we are the spiritual family for you. Amen. We thank God that you have joined us tonight to get in on this word. Look, you ain't got to brave it alone out there no more. Let me tell you, too many people have been hurt. We already know the story. We've been through it. Amen. But look, just because you got hurt don't mean that's where you stop. Amen. Look, if somebody on your job upset you, do you stop going to work? No. You keep going. Why? Because there's something you're after. There's something greater that you're after. You got bills to pay. You have a desire to bless your kids. You have a desire to take care of that car. No, you desire to own something. You can't stop just because of what other people do to you, baby. You got to keep going. You got to keep growing. Amen. And look, we are that family for you to help you thrive. No longer just trying to survive. We will help you thrive and get to where you need to be in the kingdom. That's our assignment. Amen. We understood the assignment. Hallelujah. We ain't, we ain't that one song. I don't know what all that song says. I just keep hearing this whole thing about understood the assignment. Amen. So look, we understood the assignment. Amen. We understood it. Amen. And we want you in this house. Amen. We yeah. want to help you. Let's get to it. Amen. Amen. And if you ready, all you have to do is say, I am ready at any given particular point. Remember, it's not about your money. It's not about your status in the community, baby. I don't care if you are sleeping on the couch of a friend. It don't matter, baby. God can take you from where you are to where you are supposed to be. That's right. It's called acceleration and it's called his love, grace, and mercy. That's right. It's not about anything but your soul. And that's what we want. Amen. Because you belong to God and God loves you, but he is deeply in love with you. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So look, get in this house if this house is 
for you. Amen. Pray about it. Consider it. Amen. And even if it's not this house, we don't want you to fall into the hands of the wrong ones. Amen. Don't become the prey of anybody. You need to be in a Bible based ministry. Yes. Amen. Yes. They are teaching the word, not teaching their emotions, not teaching from their feelings and their own experiences, but teaching the word of God. Amen. So look, we love you. These are your announcements. Let me get out of your way because God for sure has a word to say. I love you guys. Come on here. Don't give it up for first lady. She on Holy Ghost fire up in here tonight. I didn't know if I was going to get the teacher. Hallelujah. Going and going to the glory of God. Uh, we welcome you again. And first lady, you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Makisha. Looking, looking so lovely. God bless each and every one of you. But the woman of God is working. She's diligent. She's steadfast. And um, how we live is important. It's important who you're connected to and how they live. And I'm not just saying it, but the woman is about it. You know, we're striving. Of course, we're not perfect, but we're striving. So you look good, and God is good. Hallelujah. Let's do this thing. Y'all, let's get into a quick word of prayer. Um, we're not going to keep you long tonight. We know it's a uh, you know, it's work week, school night, um, so we try not to keep you too long. Um, but if you're able, just bow your heads with us. We just want to go before God. The Spirit of God is already moving. He's already here. And um, again, we just we welcome you in Jesus' name. So, Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, Father, we come before you tonight. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for allowing us to gather and assemble yet another time. Thank you, Father, for these that are here tonight. We just pray, Father, you speak to us, minister to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today in Jesus' name. Lord, you know uh, what you've put before us in the series that we're on. Father, we ask you to empower us, strengthen us, and equip us. Touch our hearts, Father, to seek you. Hallelujah. In a way that pleases you, God. In a way that, that honors you in a way that glorifies you, in a way that you desire to be sought, Father. It is about you. So we just ask, Lord, communicate and convey your heart and your mind and your will tonight. And we just bind every distraction. We curse every work of darkness at the root. And we ask you to meet us right where we need to be met, Father. But cause us to hear the voice of God. We need you tonight. Hallelujah. You created us. And you said, your sheep, hear your voice. So cause us to hear you tonight. Clearly, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so we're back at it, y'all. And, and we do sincerely. We thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking up your time. We know online ministry is different. And hallelujah, we're, we're moving towards, we've been in the scriptures in Jeremiah and, and, and Psalm and um, that our times and seasons are in God's hands. God bless you all. Y'all are amazing. God bless you. Do get your Bible. Do get your notebook. Hallelujah. It's Bible study night. This is where we dig into the word a little more, try to break it down a little bit, you know, take them chewable bites because we're after understanding. I don't care if it's just one or two things that come out, you know, during Bible study, you need some things you can really grip, grasp, and understand. It's understanding that changes us. It's understanding that, you know, empowers us to do better and be better. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> So we're on part three. Uno, dos, tres, tres. Hallelujah. And however you say three in other languages, we're on part three of Seek God. We're in the God Seeker series. We're some God seekers and we're some God chasers. And God has put that longing in each and every one of our hearts to seek him, to go after him, to know him. Hallelujah. That's God's greatest desire is to be known, to be loved, to be to be fellowship with. That's why he created us with the capacity to know him. Hallelujah. So again, we're in part three. And tonight we're focusing on seeking God through the reading of his word. The Bible. Glory to God. Tonight, you know, we like to take our time and chew and digest. Hallelujah. We're not rushing tonight. But we're not going to keep you long. But again, we are talking about seeking God through the reading of his word, the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. Now, we've got the promise of God's word. We've been building every week um, since part one. and 
We hope we, we, the, the desire is that, that that hunger and that thirst and that desire for God would be built and strengthened and fed. And, uh, he, Paul told Timothy to fan into flames the gift that he had received by laying on the hands. Fan it into flames. Don't let it die. Don't, excuse me. Don't let it die. Don't let it lie dormant. Hallelujah. But fan it. Praise God. So that's what we're seeking to do. And you got to know that it's like the Lord told me once. It's like everything we know, everything is available in the kingdom. And there's so many subjects to be uh, talked about. Um, but when the Lord is highlighting a particular thing, it's like being at a grocery store. And the, every item is available, but they got certain items on display. Hallelujah. You can get it. It's more accessible. It's more ready. There, there's grace when, when, when any minister, led of the spirit, when they're ministering the word to you, there's grace for that word. Hallelujah, there's grace for it all. But if the Lord is highlighting that particular thing to you, there's grace to get it. There's grace for it. He's putting it before you because faith come by hearing and you connect your faith and you set your focus in that area. So this is an invitation from God because he wants you to seek him. All, all of this is of God. The Lord God Almighty wants you to seek it. All of these things we've been building upon. Now, we're looking in Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Quickly, we'll go there. Because you got to know this is not a futile thing that you're doing. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. And if you've got your notebook, you can just make a reference of it. We got the promise of his word. Hallelujah. We got the promise. That he says, if we ask, we will receive. Right here, he says, ask, verse 7, Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. That is, you know, keep your, keep your gaze there. Keep your focus there. When you're asking, keep that openness, hallelujah, to receive. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds. You keep on seeking. You keep on seeking. Hallelujah. And to him who keeps on knocking, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will instead give him a stone. For my parents in the house, your, ch your child asks for a Capri Sun or some dinner, are they going to give him a stone? You tell him to go out back and eat the grass or go lick on the gate or something. No. Or what man is there among you? Okay. Or if he asks for a fish, will he instead give him a snake? Now, I don't know everything. Hallelujah. But I know enough to know not to give my son something evil, or give my daughter or give somebody something evil if they're asking for something good. He says, if you then, evil, sinful by nature as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more, receive that in your spirit, how much more will your father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking him. Keep on seeking him. Keep on knocking. Hallelujah. We talked about diligence and persistence last week. Hallelujah. You've got to know God wants you to seek him and he wants to give you what you are seeking him for within his will. He wants you to have it. Hallelujah. God is good. God is merciful. God is kind. God is gracious. God is holy. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. You've got the promise of his word right here. He says, if you ask and don't let discouragement deter you, don't let frustration, don't let delay, don't let seeming denial. Anywhere you see in the Bible where, where those who diligently, we talked in, in, in Hebrews, those who diligently seek him will be rewarded. Anywhere you see people diligently seeking Jesus and persevering and overcoming, they always receive. They always receive. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood, she pressed through. Hallelujah. That diligence principle. Glory to God. Now listen, he wants you to have what you're seeking him for. He wants you to have it. The Bible says God is the one working in you, 
both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You can't desire nothing good without it. Hallelujah. The thought and desire to seek him for a particular thing is of him. We have the promise of his word that if we diligently and earnestly seek God about a matter, he will answer. If we knock, that is take action. Knock, take action on it. Be, be in progressive pursuit of it. Hallelujah. We will obtain if we seek, and that speaks to a desire and pursuit. If you're seeking something, you desire it and you pursue it, and we will obtain. This people of God, this puts the ball in our court. We have a role to play. We have responsibility for how our, for the state of our lives, for the state of affairs, for how things are. He says, look, if you seek me, you will find me. If you knock on the door, I will open it to you. If you ask, ask in faith, you will receive. Now listen, tonight, we're talking about the word of God, seeking God. And one of the one of the best and surest and safest ways, hallelujah, to seek God is to spend time reading and studying and meditating his word. The Holy Bible. Hallelujah. Get your copy. Praise God. This is it. This is it, your Bible, your Bible. You got your Bible app. You got your whatever, your, your Bible. Hallelujah. We got many Bibles. Praise God. You come, you come to God with a need. You're in need of answers. Hallelujah. We already said in Jeremiah that we know that our lives are not in ourselves. Help me, Holy Ghost. Our lives are not in ourselves. We come to God, we're seeking answers. We need direction for our lives. I don't know about you. I don't have no time to waste. Hallelujah. I ain't got no time to waste to be trying this and that, enough of trial and error. I want to pinpoint. I want to go right at it. I want to be led of the spirit. God, I want you to tell me. You tell me. You lead me. You can save me years of heartache and grief and wrong direction and all these hard bondages and trials and things that we go through that we can avoid if we will seek God for his wisdom, seek his voice, seek his will, seek his counsel for your life. Hallelujah. You come in need of clarity. You come in need, you're in need of, of some clarification. There's some things we don't understand. You're seeking God for some understanding of things. You need wisdom. Hallelujah. Solomon sought God for wisdom. God is the source of every good and perfect thing. We've been saying and establishing everything that you need in your life, God has it. Your times are in his hands. Your seasons are in his hands. Your real life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You need peace. You need comfort. You're seeking God about various relationships about your life. You have questions. Hallelujah. And God's got answers. Whatever can be needed wanted or desired in life, God has something to say about it. He does have something to say. Hallelujah. We want to know how, how does God desire and require me to live? How does he want me to conduct my affairs? How does he want me to handle myself? There's too many thoughts. There's too many opinions. There's popular opinion and all these philosophies and all this jargon and all this and all that. No, 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 no. Beyond our philosophy, beyond our ideas and popular opinion and our thoughts and our feelings, what does God, hallelujah, come on, somebody. I want to know what God has to say about the matter. I want to know what God has to say about my life. Not my past. Not my failures, not my shortcomings, not people who don't like me, not people who may mean well, but can't guide my life. I want to know what God, what does my creator have to say? Hallelujah. What does the all-knowing one, what does the all-supreme one, what does the ever-living, all-wise, all-sufficient one, what does he have to say? This is why we talked last week that you got to be in recognition. You got to recognize, hallelujah, the one in whom you're seeking. What does he have to say about my life? Hallelujah. 
and we can find out what he has to say. Here's a nugget. We can find out what he has to say by examining what he's already saying. Come on here. The day is short. You know, times are moving and things are happening. People are leaving the world. We don't have time to waste. Our families need us. You know, the generation need us. There, there's a call. There's, there's a hunger. There's a desire. We're, we're not to just exist and let life drag us along. You know, we're not really living. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. You've got to understand that when you are seeking God, the sure, one of the surest ways, one of the safest ways, one of the best ways to seek God is to go to his word. And you've got to understand, listen, the Bible is God's book. Hallelujah. This, this is no ordinary book. This is no ordinary literature. This is no ordinary text. This is no ordinary reading. Your Bible, hallelujah, the, 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 the greatest selling book of all time. This is no ordinary book. This is not just his history. This is not just facts. This is not stats. This is not opinion. Hallelujah. This is not just tradition or something that sounds good or just poetry or just in the, in the millions and millions of books that have been published and created out of many. This stands alone as the revelation of God. You've got to know it. God authored this book. God is the author of the Bible. I don't care what people told you. God is the author of the Bible. We got scripture for it. Hallelujah. God authored the Bible. He has signed it. He has sealed it. And he's approved of it. Hallelujah. It is God's own words. It's God's revelation of himself. The Bible. Glory to God. Who thank you. You know how many people wish they could overseas that they're being persecuted. They can't own a personal copy of their Bible, of a Bible. The Bible is outlawed. The Bible is illegal. There's underground churches we've seen where they're tearing pages out of the Bible and smuggling it and memorizing it. We have a precious treasure here. We have the very thoughts and heart and mind of God right here where it can be studied. It can be meditated. It can be looked into. But you got to know it is God's word. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil mislead you. Hallelujah. God is the author of the Bible. Now, he used men to pen it, but he is the author. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Because you need direction and you need answers and you need clarity and you need understanding and you need wisdom and you need to know what God desires and requires of you. Hallelujah. All scripture. Somebody say all scripture. Come on. All scripture. All scripture. <laughs> Praise God. All scripture. All 66 books. Hallelujah. All scripture is God breathed. Given by divine inspiration. Listen. And is profitable for instruction. Don't you need some instruction in life? It, it, the word, the word of God is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin. Hallelujah. For correction of error and restoration to obedience. Because we already said our way is not in ourselves. Sometimes we could be doing things, we could be doing something, and we don't know it's wrong until it's pointed out, until we see it. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be doing that. Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Hallelujah. For correction. Kids running around climbing. You tell them, hey, get down. You're not supposed to be climbing on that. They, they, now it comes that, hey, the understanding, look, when the, when the light comes for training in righteousness. Uh-oh, listen. Learning to live in conformity to God's will. The word of God, the Bible, will help you learn to conform to God's will, both publicly and privately. My God, behaving honorably with personal integrity 
and with moral courage. I'm just reading the Bible. This is just scripture. So that the man of God or the woman of God, the child of God, may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Come on here. Glory to God. Don't you love his word? We, we want and we're praying, hallelujah, for a greater desire and a greater passion for God. His word. We got to love his word. Lovers of his word. Hallelujah. The Bible is God speaking. I took a pause. The Bible. The Bible is God speaking. This is why, again, we can't let the devil lie to us and manipulate us and deceive, deceive us into thinking this is just some old, boring, crusty, stale book. Boring to read. I'm good. Ooh, the excitement, the power, the glory. I got some readers in the house. You know there's nothing like a good story. There's nothing like a good book. The, the, the movie don't compare to the book. There's something about that authorship. There's something about that writing. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible is God speaking. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, God used divinely chosen vessels. He used people that he chose to pen and write down the words of the Bible. So when people, people are like, well, no, I can't believe the Bible. Men wrote it. No, 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 no. God is the author. They, the, the, they were, they are his words written through men's hands. That, that's like if you, you're asking somebody, hey, write this down for me. Like we said, at the hospital, you know, people have scribes. The doctor's got a scribe. Or if you just don't have a pen handy, you know, you're asking somebody, hey, jot this down for me. Write this down. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. They can't take ownership of that. They're not the author. They, they just wrote it. You just, you just use their hand to pen it. God is the author. Hallelujah like a tape recorder. No man can claim authorship of the Bible. Now listen, author, who glory to God, y'all gotta get this. An author is the creator or originator of any written book, excuse me, of any written work, such as a book or a play. I'm gonna say it again. An author, God is the author of the Bible. He's the author of the book. He's the author and the finisher, the Bible says, of our faith. He's the author of life. An author is the creator and the originator of any written work. Hallelujah. An author, listen, is the person who originated and gave existence to the thing. Author, this speaks to, you know, the origin, the source, the creator, where it's coming from. Hallelujah. If you tell, if, if you are having somebody scribe something for you or, or write something down for you, they can't take ownership of it. You got somebody, you know, helping you write a book or something. And you're like, hey, look, I just need you to get this while it's flowing. While I'm under divine inspiration, jot this down for me. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da, or you're running off something for a meeting or you're running off something for a birthday party, whatever it is, you're running it off and they're writing it down. Look, here's my to-do list. Look, get this. Da -da -da -da. They can't take credit for that. You're the author. It came from you. God is the author. Now listen, authorship determines responsibility. Oh, Jesus, help me get this out. The author, authorship, determines responsibility for what was created. The author is responsible for the work. The author is responsible for the work. I'm going to say it again. The author is responsible for the work. He's responsible for the content. Listen, the fact that God authored the Bible, divinely inspired, guided and led what was to be written down and what he wanted in it. The fact that he's the author, the fact that he has authorship, the, this makes him responsible for making sure all that is written therein 
comes to pass. I just said something, I need you to get it. Because you can hang your faith on this. You can hang your life on this. You can build your life, your family, your generation. You can build and rebuild your life. The broken pieces. Listen, when you're in the word of God, when you're in the Bible, it is God's book. He is the author. And as the author, he is responsible for the content. He's responsible for all that is written therein. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1 and 12, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. When, you, when you're in this book, you're seeking God for wisdom. You're seeking God for clarity. The thoughts of God, the mind of God, the will of God. Hallelujah. The desires, his thoughts, his intents, what he wants you to do, how he wants you to conduct your affairs. You can see through stories, how he handled things, how he responded to people. The wisdom he gives, the instruction he gives. Hallelujah. God, as the author of the Bible, is responsible for it coming to pass. Jeremiah 1.12 again. Come on here. Seeking God through the reading of his word. Jeremiah 1.12. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well. For I am actively watching over my word to perform it. As the author, as the writer, as the, or, the, the, the originator of the book, he's watching over it to make sure those who obey that it comes to pass, making sure that that which is written therein comes to pass because he's the writer. Hallelujah. We are responsible for what we produce. God produced this Bible. God produced this word. He's standing back of his word. He's proven his word. You can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. We're responsible for what we produce. And we're responsible for what we sign off on. Aren't you responsible for your kids? You produce them. You're responsible for, you know, your cell phone bill, your rent, whatever it is that you've signed off that is in your name. Hallelujah. God has signed and sealed and put his signature, put his stamp on this word, revelation and manifestation. He's testifying of himself. He's testifying of his own goodness. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40 and eight says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Hallelujah. The grass withers, the flower fades, Everything else is subject to time and circumstances, situation and seasons. No, no. But the word of God, the Bible also said the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Hallelujah. You're coming to the very one and you're coming to the very thing that founded and sustains this world. Matthew 5 and 18. For I assure you and most solemnly say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest stroke, not the smallest letter or stroke of the pen will pass away from the law, the law is the word, until all things which it foreshadows are accomplished. He says, look, I'm watching over this. I'm watching over the content. And if he's saying, come, and if you get in his word and you say, okay, God, I'm seeking you for understanding what should I do in this matter. I'm being persecuted. I'm being wrongly treated. I'm, I'm, I'm being mishandled, God. And I'm in turmoil. I'm frustrated. I want to lash out, but I'm trying to do right. You as the author, I'm coming, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? I'm getting counselors telling me, look, if they do it one more time, lay them flat. Lay them flat. Show, show them what time it is. Show them who you are. Who you about, who you live for. Huh? But if I get in this word, and, and if God is the one who's telling me, don't return evil for evil, He's watching over this word. He's standing back of it. He's gonna equip and empower you to eat. He, he's watching over his word. 
to perform it. And he's watching over, and if his word is in you, he's watching over his word in you. Hallelujah. When you're seeking God, when you get his word on a matter, because we're not just aimlessly seeking. We're not just seeking, seeking. It's about the attaining. He said, seeking, you shall find. It's about what we find when we're seeking God for wisdom, the wisdom we attain. When we're seeking him for peace, the peace we attain. We're seeking him for provision, the provision we attain. Hallelujah is going to help sustain us and, and lead us forward. Hallelujah. When you have a need, when you have a want, when you have a desire that you're needing or requiring from God, go to his word. This will keep you running from prophet to prophet, prophecy to prophecy, mm -hmm. ministry to ministry. Who's got a word? Who can hear from God for me? This church, that church, this will keep you from having to run all over town, being led about. Hallelujah. Some of there's predators out here. There's people who don't love God. There's people who would love to take advantage of you. The, the Bible talks about wolves in sheep's clothing. Hallelujah. I want you to pay for a prophecy. All of this type of mess and foolishness. You've got to be able to hear God from yourself, for yourself, in his word. The enemy knows that you're seeking. He sees you seeking. Hallelujah. But we've got to do it God's way. Again. So we're kept out of just longing and wondering because when there's a seeking, there's an openness. I'm looking, but I'm looking for something in particular. Hallelujah. I'm looking for God's wisdom. I'm looking for God's word. I'm looking for God's direction. How can I hear? How do we know what God has to say about a man? How do we know? How can we know? How do we know what God has to say about a man? By going and seeing what he has already said. What is he saying? What does he have to say? Well, what has he said? Because whatever he will say is going to line up with what he already said. This word is our safety net. This word, this word, the Bible, this is our safety net. If it don't line up with the word, if it don't line up with scripture, hallelujah. This is what we try all up against. We try it up against the word. Bible talks about testing the spirits by the spirit. It's not because you come looking good, sounding good, cute, anointed, uh, you know, touching my feet. Wait a minute. Is it Bible? I need something greater than my feelings to govern. I need something greater than my emotions. Does it line up with the word? How do I know what God is saying? How do I know what he wants me to do? Get into his word. Seek him. Seek him. Not just praying and wondering and no, no, God, I'm going to your word. I'm going to see what you have to say about this. And you can stand on his word. He's going to stand back of his word. You're seeking him for healing. You're seeking him for provision. You're seeking him for peace. You stand on his word. You get his word. You attain his word. Stand on it. But when you're seeking God, when you come to his word, Hallelujah, you got his word. When you come to his word, you got to come with an open heart and an open mind. That is an openness to receive and a willingness to do that which is written. That's where the rubber meets the road. One more time. The Bible is God's word and all of it. When you come to God, when you come seeking him, you, you're, you're opening the pages of the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. You're in it now. When you come, you have to come with an open heart. You have to come with an open mind. That is, again, a willingness to receive. You're willing to receive what it, what it says in the word. You're willing to receive what the Bible says about you, what, it, what, it said, what, it, what God says in his word about your loved ones, about your circumstance, about your situation. You're willing to receive what he says, and you're willing to do what he's instructing you to do. Matthew 13, 10 through 12, we're almost there. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 12. Then 
the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the crowds in parables? Jesus replied to them, to you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it has not been granted. For whoever, listen to this, whoever has spiritual wisdom because he is receptive to God's word. Spiritual wisdom, wisdom, spiritual wisdom, hallelujah. The Bible says the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not books, not just college, all this stuff has its place, but we're talking about the wisdom of God. He says the fear of the Lord, the reverence, the respect, hallelujah, the, the honor and the love and the acknowledgement for God, that's the beginning of wisdom. He says, whoever has spiritual wisdom, how, why? Because he's receptive to God's word. I'm open. I'm open to receive God. I'm seeking you. I recognize that you have all knowledge. You have all power. You've never failed. You can't fail. You, you, you won't mislead me. It's impossible for God to lie. The word lie is impossible for him to deceive you. It's impossible for God to mislead you. He says, to him, more will be given, and he will be richly and abundantly supplied. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom, because he has devalued God's word, this is Bible, even what he has will be taken. Come on. Come on, somebody. God's not going to mislead you. You come to his word. You come open. If, if you, you, you see all this stuff online, there, there's all these master classes and these CEOs. We already said, you know, one of our uh, shows is Shark Tank. If, if, there, if there is just, they're not even God, clearly, but if there's an expert in some type of subject matter, somebody who's got a proven track record, they've got proven success, hey, I have done what you're trying to do. I've built multi-million dollar companies. You're, you're trying to open a bakery, I've opened 10. You're trying to get into the music business, I got artists all over the world. You're trying to get healthy, I've trained you know thousands of people on how to lose this weight. I know how to do this, I do this, hallelujah. Even on the natural side, you're gonna come with an openness, a willingness to hear, a willingness to learn, a willingness to receive, even on the natural side. You go to school, you're listening to that college professor. You go to work, you're in on-the-job training, mentorship, whatever it is, to where there's something I need to learn and I what? Recognize that you're able to teach me. Come on, somebody. There's got to be an openness. There's got to be a willingness to receive of God's word. Who's wiser than him? The Bible said to the only wise God. Wisdom comes from him. Strength comes from him. Wisdom against natural, God Almighty. Wisdom that don't make no sense. Faith in him when he's leading you by an instruction, hallelujah, that puts you beyond the natural. He will give you instructions in his word that trump natural law, that trump physical limitation, hallelujah. Because why? He's watching over his word. He's watching over it to perform it. He authored it. He breathed it. He inspired it. He brought it forth. He is responsible for making sure it comes to pass when it is instruct, when it is heeded, when it is obeyed. Come on, somebody. The, 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 the freedom you need, the victory you need, he will lead you through his word and give you the guidance you need. You guys know? Hallelujah. He'll lead you through his word. <clears throat> you cannot come to God where we said there's got to be an openness. Again, how would you like it? Okay, you've been on the job. You've been on the job two, three years or however long. You know, you know your stuff. You've studied, you've done this. And here comes some new jack, fresh off the steps. Come on here. Don't know right from left. <laughs> Don't know up from down. Glory to God. And he's going to come try to tell you how to run things. Or have you ever tried to tell somebody something and they're constantly bucking, but this, but that, but this. Look, 
I've done this. I, do you want the help or not? And if you want the help, why are we arguing? Close your mouth and receive. Close your mouth and open your ears. Come on here. You can't come seeking to disprove his word. You, you don't come to the Bible. You don't come reading, looking to disprove it. There's a bunch of contradictions in here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick this thing apart. You don't come closed off. You got to drop your ideas. You got to drop your thoughts. You got to check your feelings at the door. When you're coming to God, when you're coming to the Almighty for answers, for wisdom, for guidance, glory, hallelujah, for clarity, meditate in his word. His word is light. This is no dead book. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. It's alive. It's alive. And the author is alive. He's alive and living to make sure that it comes to pass, to make sure that those who obey, when he says given, it shall be given. When he says don't return evil for evil. When he says, you know, all the things that are listed in his word, when he's given these principles. Hallelujah. Bless those who curse you. For those who do that. For you to even get saved. Watching over the confession of your mouth and the belief in your heart to hallelujah, invite Jesus in to save you from sin. Everything written in his word. When he says, follow me, when he says, call to me, and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Hallelujah. That this word, when it gets in you, is producing faith. You're seeking God. Lord, what should I do? You come to his word and you see that hall of faith. You see Ezekiel and Isaiah and Daniel and Elijah, those who were led beyond natural means, Abraham and things that don't make sense. But when you have it in his word and when you've seen it in his word, you know, okay, well, wait a minute. Lord, you might not lead me the orthodox way. You might be leading me in a way that doesn't make sense. Because why? If I get in his word and he'll tell me, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on, on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he's going to guide your steps. He's given me that direction. He's leading me through his word. The Bible says in Psalm 119, and I'm done, 105. Your word, your word is like a lamp to my feet, for my feet, and a light for my path. It shows how life should be lived. It, this Bible, get your Bible, praise God. Hallelujah, thank him for it. Thank him for your own copy. Psalm 119 and 105. Your word. Your word, your word is like a lamp, giving me guidance, hallelujah, giving me direction and a light for my path. It shows me, it shows how life should be lived. John 8 and 12, Jesus, once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. What can you do without light? How can you live without light? You need some type of light. Black light, iridescent light, fluorescent light. There's nothing you can do without light. You need light. His word is light. He said, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. He who follows me, he who seeks after me, he who comes after me, hallelujah, will not live in darkness but we'll have the light of life. We follow Jesus by obeying his word. Jesus is the word, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. Excuse me, that's first John. In the beginning, that's John. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God. The word was God. He and his word are one. He was in the beginning with God. He said his life was the light of man. The direction you need, the clarity you need, the answers you need, how to pick your friends, how to pick a mate, how to pick it, how to go about obtaining that job. Come on here. You're not just left. This is top tier. Yes, there are people and mentors and motivational speakers and principals and 
grind and go hard, all of that, we understand it has its place. Hallelujah. But God is the author and as the source. Let him navigate you there. Come on. Seeking God through the reading of his word. His word is life. His word is peace. His word is milk. His word is meat. His word is honey. The Bible says his word is like a hammer that strikes, a, uh, uh, that, that smashes a rock to pieces. His words that he has offered, that he is watching over. Come on, if you don't take nothing else from tonight's Bible study, you got to know when you're reading the word and when you see an instruction or some direction or something jumps out at you, you got to know God is watching over this. God is highlighting it to you so he can do it. And there it is. First lady, you got the thing? Um, <laughs> I believe Pastor, uh, so he up. very well covered this. Um, I really, really love it. Um, let me see something that I want to say about this. Um, I'm sorry, just checking on something really quickly. Um, going back over something really quick. Something that's very important to me to make mention of again is the fact that God is the author of the word. A lot of people get it twisted. A lot of people of different faiths, um, they tend to say that they do believe that Jesus is a good man. They believe that he was a prophet, um, that he did walk the earth. They believe a lot of these good things. They believe that he was a holy man. But the one thing they fail to receive is that he was, in fact, the son of God. And they also tend to start going and flailing about like fish on the ground is when you start talking about the fact that God is the author of the entire Bible, because they feel that since man penned it, the word is now fallible. God is the source of the word. Just because God told man to write this down doesn't make the word now fallible. God is infallible. His word is infallible. Every word of God proves true. Just as it says in the book of Proverbs, we've got to understand that if we want to live lives that are holy, that are set apart as God desires for us to. You've got to go to him for his word. It says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And we only find that and discover that within the context of his word, understanding how it is that he wants us to deal with matters. He doesn't want us returning insult for insult. He wants us to pray for those that persecute us. Uh -oh. Who else? <clears throat> Who else would tell us to do such a thing? Because if I know me, if I know my flesh, I'll punch a joke in the eye for insulting me. I'm ready to give somebody a tongue lashing for saying something stupid to me. But God says, pray for those that persecute you. He said he wants me to remain honorable in everything that I do. He said, vengeance is mine. I have to look at the word. I have to see what God has to say on the matter so that I can line up with what he says because God tells us in his word that we should try to find that which pleases him. You have to understand that even through his apostles that wrote different epistles, you have to understand that that was even him inspiring them to say particular things so that we would take those thoughts for ourselves, too. You have to understand that when it comes to God, he's not going to debate with you about what you think. There must be an exchange of thought line. Because he said, let this mind be in you. He didn't say, keep your thoughts to yourself and just, just take a little bit here and there. No, he said, let this mind be in you. So we have to exchange our thoughts for his so that his thoughts become our thoughts, which are higher than our human thoughts. And so that our ways become higher than the human ways we already possess. These things were already on a much lower level, a much lower scale. We needed to come up. We needed to level up, as they say. And you only do that by way of coming to Christ Jesus and getting that same mind that he was functioning with. Like he said, I say what I heard my father say. I do as I saw my father do. This is how we are supposed to be, as we are to be imitators, as the word tells us to be. We cannot go around just Oh, I'm going to do things like this and I'm going to do things like this because guess what? Now we began to live lives based upon our emotions and our feelings. God didn't leave us 
to the devices of our emotions and feelings because that's the realm where the devil loves to play. Amen. The devil comes in there all day. One minute you feeling great, the next minute he'll have somebody set up to come say something stupid to you mm -hmm. and throw your whole day off. Now you're functioning out of the realm of your emotions and you act in a straight plumb pool and now you know you're going to have to go and repent. You have to function off of what you know. You have to go to where the thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You have to go to where the ways are higher than your ways. You only find that in the word of God. People of God, listen to what we are saying. Because let me tell you, you'll end up in relationships with men. You'll end up in relationships with women. You have no business being in because you let your heart strings get connected where had you functioned where your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Had you functioned from that level, had you functioned from that level of existence, you never would have got your heart strings connected. God was trying to save you. Now you've gotten connected to something you have no business being connected to. And now your life is going a direction it has no business. And you wonder why you feel the way you feel and why you're going down the path you're going down and your pastor can't help you. Your mama can't help you. Your friends can't help you. It's because you chose to disobey the instruction of God. You're to be an imitator of God. That means I've got to imitate his thoughts. I've got to imitate his ways. Amen. And God don't act out of the realm of emotion. Mm. Although he is love. You want to act out of emotion? Act out of that. Mm. Because we will be judged by the law of love. Boom in the room. People of God, we're trying to tell you. We're not trying to tell you something that we're not practicing. This takes maturity. It takes time to develop in these areas. I understand it. I know. We know. Because it's not easy. It's a battle. But you got to come out of your emotions and you got to go to a whole nother realm. But let me tell you, when you take yourself to that realm, because it is a will issue. Because you are not held bound by no spirit. And no spirit got control over you when you would say yes to Jesus Christ. Why? Because we learned that he broke the monarchy. And where we learned that? Where we find that out? The Bible talks about praise God. Yeah. Go ahead. Somewhere here, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Bible talks about us getting to know the things that have been freely given to us. And say, if you want to hide something from somebody, Book. It's hidden in the book. It's hidden in plain sight. Just because this book isn't glowing and illuminating and floating, there's power in this book. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Mm -hmm. There's power here. Oh, yes. Woman of God just sat there and told you that this is it. Where you get your decision making from. Yeah. Like she said, where it's not in your emotions. Okay, hey, I got something that higher than my emotions, higher than my feelings, that I'm seeking God when He tells me, hey, this is the type of person you want to be in relationship with. When yes. he tells me, hey, blessed are those who meditate in the word and don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Come on. Hallelujah. You're meditating in the word. Your delights are in the law of the Lord. It's telling you contrasting in Proverbs, the wicked and the righteous, those that wink with the eye, those that appear a certain way. Hallelujah. But it talk about you behind your back. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about the immoral woman. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Beyond her appearance. This is where you get that wisdom from. This yeah. is where it's not just, oh, she looked good. She got on tight dress and she curvy. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, no, no. I need wisdom beyond because I can't let my eyes leave me. I can't mm -hmm. let my heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Ooh. So when this gets in, it can divide. The Bible says it divides soul and spirit. It can get in and divide those thoughts that say, hey, look, brother. I know she looked good to you. I know he looked good. But you need discernment. Discernment comes from the word. Come on. Discernment. Not just your thoughts. Not No, no, no. Discernment. Good judgment. Good judgment. Wisdom. Wise decision making comes from this book that tells you, hey, don't spend up everything you get. Yeah. Proverbial wisdom. Solomon. Hallelujah. Spent that time seeking God through his sacrifice. He was seeking God. Yes. 
He was diligently seeking God and God answered. And the first thing he asked for, God, give me wisdom. That's right. And you see the wisdom. Get in Proverbs. Get in Psalms. Hallelujah. Get in the book of Daniel. Who is so chopped and packed? Yes. This will change and revolutionize your life. It's all there. It is all there. And look, one of the biggest things that I have seen, let me tell you Thank something. You, Jesus. Please do not fall prey to any of these false prophets out here. Mm. Oh, please know that your first lady is coming with a teaching on it. God gave this teaching to me years ago, yep. but for some reason I can't find it. And he told me, he said, let's start it all over again. So guess what? This is what I've been doing. He's been coming to me in my sleep and me and my husband have been praying in dreams and in visions in tongues together. Let me tell you, oh, it's coming and it's going to change some of your lives. Because the thing is, is that it's not wrong to desire a fresh right now word from the Lord. But the problem is, is that the devil knows that you desire it. He knows that you want it. So he's got to send a counterfeit, uh, a counterfeit after you to mess over what God wants to do with you. Let me tell you something. If you're living in sin, stop trying to expect God to come forth with the word about your brand new house in your brand new car. Expect God to come forth with a confrontational word, a word of conviction, not condemnation. There's a difference. Yes. A word of conviction to tell you to get your life in order, to cut the crap, cut the nonsense. Let's get your life together. Let's get that heart purified so that I can bring to you what I truly want to bring into your life and into the lives of your children. You've got to come out and you've got to understand that the word of God is the surest form of prophecy. So when you need a word from the Lord, go to the word of God. Go to the word, as pastor said. You have to go to the word trusting that God is going to give you advice. He's going to give you sure counsel about how to handle certain matters in your life. He has a word concerning every matter. There is no issue under the sun that God has not dealt with. You've got to understand that you cannot play with God. I'm telling you, in these seasons that we are going into, let me tell you, forget just what the seasons we're going into. Understand right here, right now, God wants you to know he is not a fool. God sees all. Even the night is as daylight to God. So what you think you're doing in the dark, God's sitting right there looking at you. It's like a searchlight sitting right there on you and he's looking right down at you. And he's waiting for you to get done. He's waiting for you to stop putting him in the midst of that mess. Why would you take Jesus to a whorehouse? And you would say, well, no, I wouldn't do it. But if he is in you and you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, you are taking him into that mess. You are taking him into that club. You are taking him to that bedroom where you are opening your legs wide, throwing your legs high. That is not the will of God for your life. And we've got to get our hearts purified. We've got to get our minds right. You want something from God? Give God what he wants most. And that's your heart. Give him your heart. Don't withhold from him what's due to him for all that he has done for you. Tight, but it's right. <laughs> Mashanda, listen. God is making his plea because he sees and knows before a word is on your lips. He already knows. Hallelujah. He knows our thoughts from afar. He knows the very hairs or lack thereof, praise God, on your head. If you ain't got no, he, he knows the follicles in your scalp. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Seek him. Seek him for answers. Seek him by going to his word. We, we, we already said you've got to be diligent about it, though. Yes. It's not doing a, a, a two-minute devotional once a week. Oh, no. No. You've got to be diligent. Diligently seek him. God will spend time, and I'm going to read it, and I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to read it again. It's not necessarily volume, but if you've got two, three scriptures that you're, that you're you know, pouring over and praying, asking God, open this up. Give me revelation. Lord, I'm open. What, what do you mean by this? That whole part... When Jesus was talking to the disciples, when he said, hallelujah, what is it? Well, <laughs> but when, when he was talking to them that, hey, to you it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, mm -hmm. but to the outsiders, it comes in parables in a way that doesn't make sense. Yeah. That happened because they asked him privately. 
Yes. He's putting out these parables. They're not understanding either. Mm -hmm. Jesus speaks and does things in our lives. Sometimes we don't get the disciples came privately and mm -hmm. asked him, okay, wait a minute, Jesus, what did you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not understanding. Lord, what, what do you mean? Then he said, ah, to you it's been given to know. Mm -hmm. The mysteries of the kingdom. Why? They sought him privately. They sought him yes. to the side. Yes. Nicodemus, when he came seeking Jesus, where we get John 3, 16, God so loved the world. When he told them, God speaks in a way that doesn't always make sense. When he said a man must be born again. Okay, well, how can a man be born if he's old? Hallelujah. The spiritual discernment, spiritually discerned, because yes. stuff goes beyond surface. Things aren't always as they appear. You got to get in this word to sensitize and tune you. Yes. Tune you like, a, like an instrument. Mm -hmm. Tune you to the voice of God. Tune you to how he speaks, what he will and won't say, how he will and won't lead you. Seek him by cracking it open. More, more than once a week. Spend time in the word. Time in the word is time with God. That's right. He is the word. More than once a week. More than just a few minutes dabbling here and there. Time in his word is time with him and he's watching over him. In Jesus' name. Look, we don't want to close the broadcast without giving you an opportunity to know Jesus, the author of your life, your creator. The Bible says all things were created through him. Jesus created you. Yes. And he loves you and he wants you to be with him. And he died for you. Hallelujah. There's nothing standing in the way. Hallelujah. But your will. Your willingness to say, hey, look, yes, I got some issues, and but Lord, I'm coming to you for forgiveness, for salvation. Hallelujah. And if you just pray along these lines, but pray it from your heart. Just ask God to forgive you and mean it. Ask him for his forgiveness and mean it. God, I ask you to forgive me tonight. I come to you tonight. And I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me for all of my sin. Forgive me for every error. Forgive me for secret sin. Forgive me for lies, for wickedness, for rebellion, for lust. Forgive me for the things I do and have done against you. I ask you to please forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me. Clean me. Cleanse me tonight. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe he got up again the third day. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Help me to live for you. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord Jesus, I choose you. Hallelujah. I choose you. I choose you today, Lord. And I will follow you. And I will spend time in your word, getting to know what you say. But write my name in your book. Take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, hallelujah, let us know about it. Let us know. Drop us a line. Praise God, find you a, again, th this is it. You got to find you a Bible teaching church, a Bible-based church. Come on here. If we're preaching the word, what, what are we doing? What, what are you saying? What are you saying to me? What, where is it? What, what are you saying to me? Because if you ain't saying this, you ain't saying that. If we want to know what God is saying, you got to know what God has. Say it. There we go. What's his name? Hobby Lane? There it is. God, I can't hear you. God, I need you. Come on, y'all. God is ready to speak. He is already speaking. We just hadn't been listening. He is going to speak what he has spoken. And what he's spoken is in the word. He says, I'm God. I change it not. If you get his word, I'm telling you, people of God, if you get his word on it, okay, no devil stop you. Can't no devil manipulating and lying to you and tell you you're going to be cursed. That ain't the word. Hmm. Curse causes can't come. That's right. This word lets me know to repent. This word lets me know not, no matter how far I've gone, Jesus will forgive me. This word lets us know, hallelujah, if we say we have no sin, we make up a lie. But this word tells me if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me. Wash me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. This word tells me that. That's right. And like Pastor said, if you just rededicated your life, if you just gave your life to Christ for the first time, please send it to that right there. 
that email right there, awpmin21 at gmail.com. Let us know, please. We would love to hear it because we want to know that the word is blessing you. And hey, if you already got the connects to us, you're already a part of the AWPM fam. Let us know. You already know how to get a hold of us. Just let us know. Hey, the word blessed me tonight. I got something. I was enriched by this. Amen. These are the things that touch our hearts so greatly. Amen. Hallelujah. It is. It's offering time. Hallelujah. It is offering time. We continue our worship, you know, of the Lord with our giving. Those tithes, those offerings, those gifts we love. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. Why? It's biblical. It's scriptural. We're not demanding a particular amount out of you. No. Hallelujah. We want you to be blessed. And this is the, one of the ways that God has set up. Hallelujah. We give it to his work. Given it shall be given. He says in Proverbs, there are those who generously scatter abroad, mm -hmm. yet they increase more. Solomon in Ecclesiastes talks about giving a portion to seven, so a portion to eight. He says, you don't know what evils are going to come up on the earth. Come on. Hallelujah. Those who, the Bible says, your kindness will reward you. That's right. And those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. That's principle. That's Bible. It's the word that tells us that. Beyond manipulation. Hallelujah. So we want you to be blessed. Yeah. Give and it shall be given. So nothing too big. Nothing too small. You got to give according to, you know, proportion to what you have. And as you've made up in your mind, yes. he says you don't give under compulsion. You don't give because somebody pressuring the, the, the daylights out of you. Yeah. I ain't going to do it. If you don't give, I ain't saying nothing. You don't give, I mm. Wait a minute, what? Oh, yeah. We, we what Bible heard, is that? Oh, we've heard the foolery. Where that at? People letting you know they ain't giving you a prophetic word until you give them some money that you need to be obedient to God because God dealing with you about a certain amount. And if you don't give it, they ain't saying nothing. Well, let me tell you, they are bald-headed lie right now. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, as a prophetess myself, if God got a word he want to tell you, I'm going to tell you what he got to say, even if you don't put a, a 25 cent in my hand. Mm -hmm. It ain't about the money. It's about God's will for your life. Mm -hmm. You give according to what you have, not what you don't. You are to be a blessing. You want to step, uh, step into the kingdom economy? You start doing things principle wise from the yeah. word of God. There it is. We're not going to beat you. We're not going to slap you around and tell you you ain't no good. You ain't no child of God. What? Look, give according to principle and you will provoke God's provision. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's big. Hear that. Say it again. Hmm. Say it again. When you give according to God's principles, when you do this, you are going to provoke God's provision for my, your life. My, my, my. Lord have mercy. We prosper by principles. There you go. There are things, you know, that we do in accordance and in alignment with his will. God does challenge us at various times. We're not saying... You know, God won't challenge you to come up because he's looking at your heart. And if there yeah. is something he wants you to release as a connection from your heart, if it is, okay, hey, give up the watch. It's because the watch has more of a hold or there's something he's trying to get to you, but it's not that way. So praise God. Nothing too big, nothing too small. Dollar sign, AWPM. Mm -hmm. Bible says if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. You know. You, based on where you are, you know, and where you want to be, you're so. That's right. You're so in Jesus' name. And whoop, there it is. <laughs> Praise God. So, yes, everybody, we pray that you were all blessed, blessed, blessed. We pray that this word helped you and encouraged you to continue to seek after God, to really go after him in his word. Do not become prey to these false, bald-headed, lying prophets and prophetesses, because truth is, is that they have the gift. They just don't have the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, the word tells you they didn't have the spirit of God to restrain them. So if me seeking God for provision and finances, mm -hmm. I'm seeking him. I've gone to his word. I've gotten some principles. But he's also telling me, don't give under compulsion or in response to pressure. Mm -hmm. Pressure, pressure. I'm not talking about being challenged to come up in your giving, to come up in your faith. But pressure, 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 pressure. Don't give into that. 
You've got his word. This is your safety net mm -hmm. to help you. Yes. To know who to get involved with, who not to get involved with, what to do, what not to do. Amen. It said it shows you how life should be lived. Amen. God's grace, we're going to be back on Sunday, y'all. Sunday. Also, no Bible study next week. Next week is, you know, the Christmas break coming into that. Hallelujah, that blessed time where we're celebrating. We've been celebrating all month, but where, you know, that day that's, you know, designated to recognize for some, you know, Jesus' birthday. Hallelujah, Christmas, the birth of Christ. Yes. So that week, you know, we're taking off. We want you to spend time with family. Hallelujah, don't do that. Jesus wouldn't do. Yeah. Don't get too turned. Don't have a too turned Christmas. Uh, Hallelujah. If you're going to turn up, you turn up with some apple juice, yeah. some of that sparkling apple juice don't, or grape juice, Martinelli's. Don't Amen. Don't have a two turn Christmas. Yeah. Hallelujah. But next week we're off. So we'll be back on Sunday. Then we won't be back. We won't be back again. God bless you, prophetess. Total restoration. Praise God. Until the following Sunday. So y'all take that week off. Hallelujah. Spend some time with family. Spend some time with God. Spend some time seeking them. You know, you got shopping and just, you know, the holiday festivities and cheer and the Yule and all of that. Hallelujah. Enjoy yourself. We ought, we ought to enjoy this time of year. Yes. And we will send out reminders. So, you know, just keep your eye on Facebook. For the family, you already know, we'll contact you personally. But we will send out a reminder on Facebook so everybody knows. That's it. So we love you all. We pray you have a wonderful night. We thank you for uh, joining us tonight. And first lady, we pray us out. All right, everybody. Well, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for each and every person that was with us tonight. It was not by coincidence, Father, but we know it was by your love. Father, that you wanted this word to go forth, that you wanted your children to be enriched, Father, that you are growing us up into the full stature of Christ Jesus, that you are bringing us to such a place of maturity, God, beyond the place of manipulation, mm -hmm. Father, beyond the place of being prey for the predators, God, mm -hmm. but being so strong in you, Father, coming into the full purpose that you have called us to walk in in this earth. We thank you, Father, for your truth. We thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for your guiding principles and your counsel. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you will make your presence ever so thick where each and every person is, Father. Even for those who are going to be on the replay, Father. Those who are going to watch by way of YouTube, Father. We thank you for each and every YouTube subscriber. We thank you for each and every person on the replay, Father. We ask that you bless them greatly in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Let every house be filled with your joy, Father. Let every house be filled with your peace and your presence, Lord. Let us just play music. Let us be glad. Let us be in a place of thanksgiving, Father, because because, Lord, you've kept us this long. And, God, you didn't bring us this far to leave us. We thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we bless your awesome, beautiful, holy Amen. name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the precious name of Amen. Jesus, Amen. we ask you to release healing, God. Release healing upon those Amen. who need the healing. I'm seeing a foot. I'm seeing like an ankle area, and I speak healing to it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, release healing to that ankle right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for each and every person, Father. Release healing, release love, release renewal, Father, restoration in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, the testimonies that are going to come forth from each and every person connected to this ministry, because we are going higher, Father, because our thoughts are going to be your thoughts and our ways are going to be your ways. We are not legalistic, but we are the real remnant. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. If you agree, say amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You want to say anything else? Praise God. We love you all. We want you to have a wonderful week. Um, praise God. Do, do be in gear. Um, we're taking the, we said the week off, but then the following week, prayer meeting. You know, so be in gear. With, the year is coming to a close. And all of this is strategic because, you know, we're seeking God for this new year, seeking God for 2022. All of these principles converge, and it's important that you do it so that the new year, so that the calendar don't change, but we stay in the same position 
We need a new start. We need a fresh start. We need a new beginning. We need things to be rekindled. We want things to be different, better, and higher in 2022. So we're seeking him now for it. So just, just be in prayer. Brother John, God bless you, sir. God bless you, Brother Washington. Praise God. I had forgot about uh, the grilled and the pit. We're going to make it happen in <laughs> Jesus' name. But we're seeking God. We're seeking God for this new year. Praise God. We seek God and we live. So that's it. Love you all. Y'all have a wonderful night. Yes, we love you guys. And we will see you soon. Remember, keep your eyes on Facebook. And hey, if you have not yet, go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to we channel. love you guys. Get in that house. Amen. Amen. Subscribe. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you.